Everybody ready? Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> All right, open your Bible, Proverbs eleven twenty four. Get ready to give and uh, get your offering envelope out. Y'all are very generous givers. Look how the Lord brought you into this land, in this building. Y'all are amazing givers. And your pastors are amazing givers. And so they're very generous givers. So y'all are generous givers. If you're watching online, there's a place where you can sow a seed, where you can give. And uh, here's what the Lord said to me one time. He said, there's some things in life you'll get faster by sowing for it than you will by saving for it. Let's try that again. He said, there's some things in life you will get faster by sowing or giving, sowing for it, than you will just by saving for it. Right. How many ever saved up for something? Kept saving. Mm -hmm. Kind of a slow process. Well, the Lord said, well, you know, that's good. You can do it that way. He said, but there's some things you'll get faster by sowing for it than just by saving for it. Thank you for your enthusiasm. In other words, I've had several occasions in my life where I had saved up some money. And uh, one particular, when I was in Bible college, uh, Trent and I were dating. And in our Bible college, we had a um, chapel uh, every day. And so we'd been dating, but we weren't sitting together. And there happened to be a minister there, a missionary at that Bible college. And so uh, <clears throat> they started receiving offer for the missionary. Well, I had been working uh, valet parking in Dallas at some nice restaurants, and I'd been saving my money, and I had about, what, $500 saved up, something like that. I had about $500 saved up in a jar in the back of the drawer in my room. And so I had the money saved up, and my plan was to get me a brand new blue, baby blue Monte Carlo 1975 with a navy blue vinyl top. That was my plan. And so I was working hard, saving up my money just to get up enough money, you know, to make a good down payment, you know, and then be able to pay it off. And so um, um, while they're taking the offering, the, the Lord said, uh, how'd you like to give that money you got there in that for your car? I said, well, I, I really wouldn't like to do that. <laughs> and he said, well, you don't have to. I said, well. Uh, I believe that if I'll sow it, you'll multiply the seeds on. And so I ran to my room, and when I ran, Trina told me later, she said, I was watching you to see if you're spiritual. <laughs> because we were dating, so she wanted to see if I was spiritual enough to qualify. And so she wondered why I left during the time of chapel. She said, where is he going? That's not very spiritual. Well, she didn't know I was going back to the room to get that offering. And so I went back and got that money, came and gave it in the offering. And then the devil told me, there went your money for your car, so you're not going to have a new car. Hmm. Well, anybody won't know what happened. By the end of that semester, I was driving a brand new baby blue Monte Carlo 1975 with a, with a navy blue vinyl top. And so uh, uh, actually that beautiful car, I said, I'll have one before the end of the semester. Never had a new car in my life, but I'd been saving for it. And so when I sold it, then the devil said, now you're not going to have one. And I said, no, I'm also going to have one. I had a missionary one time I brought to my house and he saw one of my, my trucks. Well, uh, you know, I had a rafter truck probably at that time. And so he, I could tell he's a missionary, so he's kind of mad. He's a missionary we supported. And he's kind of mad. He said, why do you have a truck like that? I said, well, because I like that truck. I said, they didn't make them for heathens. I mean, I'm a Christian. I should have one. He said, well, you could have given that money to missions. I said, well, the truth is I actually did give to missions. And that's how I got the truck. What I'm wondering is why you don't have one. Are y'all still here? In other words, God's not talking about you sowing and doing without. He's talking about you sowing and still have an increase. So Proverbs 11, 24, can you find that? I'll give you one more instance real quickly here. I've been saving up money for my first, for my first jet. Whoo! I had a hard time even saying that, jet. Uh, saving up money, so I ended up with a couple hundred thousand dollars. And so I thought, well, I'll get some money together and I'm going to get me a jet. So as I travel a lot, and so it's very difficult trying to do all the things, you know, and get everywhere. So I saved up over $200,000 and I went to one of Dad Hagen's meetings. And guess what they did? They got up to take an offering for him and get a jet. <laughs> what a coincidence. So the Lord said, how'd you like to give your jet money? To Dad Hagen. I said, well, you know, probably not. 
And the Lord said, don't you think he should have a jet before you have one? I said, well, probably. I said, all right, well, I'm going to give it. So I just gave my jet money to the Kenneth Hagin Ministries. He got him a nice jet. I went home with that, what do you call it? Giver's remorse. I went home with a, how many of you ever had giver's remorse? So I went home and, and the thought came to my mind. Took, how long did it take you to save up that money? I said, well, it took a little while. And you just gave it away like that, right? I said, no, really, actually, I sold it. And so the devil said, now you're not ever going to have a jet. I said, ah. I said, I am hearing you, devil. Really, because I sold it, that just means I'm going to have a better jet than I ever could have afforded. And I do. I said, I do. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and so the devil tried to put fear in you and say, what if all that giving don't work? So I just switched around and said, Mr. Devil, what you going to do when it does work? All right, let's try it again. Come on, when you're giving, the devil tried to put fear in you and say, what you going to do if all that tithe and giving don't work? The Lord said, you don't have to listen to that. Talk back to him. Say, devil, what you going to do when tithing and giving does work because God's opening the windows of heaven, pouring out a blessing. I don't have room enough to receive it. He'll multiply my seed sown. Amen. Amen. All right, turn to Proverbs eleven twenty four. So I can tell you several instances where I received faster through sowing than through saving. Uh, I wish y'all could look at your face while I'm teaching. Anyway, so this is all right, Proverbs 11, 24. Got it? There is a scattereth, and yet, oh, one translation said one gives away and still gets richer. So God did not design tithing and giving for you to decrease. God designed tithing and giving for increase. So Proverbs then, there is that, there is that scatters and yet does what? Increases. increases. So if you're a tither and you're a giver, God's actually planning on you increasing, not decreasing. Amen. Amen. So it says there is a scatters yet increase. There is that withholds more than is appropriate and it tends to poverty. Hmm. There is that withholds. In other words, it didn't say it didn't do anything. They just withheld more than was appropriate. They weren't generous. And he said, it tends to lack. So I asked the Lord one time, I, I said, well, where does lack come from? He said, lack does not necessarily come from money that you don't have. He said, lack comes from money you do have, you shouldn't have. Boy, it's getting quiet in here now. In other words, sometimes when you're dealing, come on, even in a time of trouble and you keep tithing and you keep sowing, even in a time of trouble, you're believing God is your source. And so you're not going to back down and back off and be afraid. Why? Because God is able to make all grace abound toward you. So he says there is that scatters and yet does what? Increases. Amen. There is that withholds more than is appropriate and actually has less. And you'd think if you held on to your money tighter, you'd have more. He said, if you hold on to your money too tight, you'll have less. All right, let's try that again. I said, you'd think if you held on to your money tight, you'd have more money, right? Hold on. Hold on tight. He said, I'm just frugal. Well, you might just be stingy. Frugal's good at Walmart, not at church. I said, frugal might work at Target and Walmart. It don't work at church. Don't work at the kingdom of God. What works in the kingdom of God is generous. Besides that, you do not want that on your tombstone. Here lies stingy. You don't want that on your tombstone. In other words, nobody cares how talented you are and nobody cares how smart you are and nobody cares if you're stingy even if you're real holy, but you're stingy. And so anybody can be generous and learning to be generous simply means to leave your comfort zone just a little bit. Come on, whatever your comfort zone is, just a little bit. And so many times the Lord, like I went to Dad Hagen's meeting years ago and he had always received the Thursday night offering. And so Trina and I had been saving up money 
for our church and for the ministry. And we needed $1 million. So we'd been saving up money. And uh, so we were claiming to have $100,000 in savings. We were claiming a $1 million. And so we were saving up money. So I got up to, how much money did I get up to? I got up to about $12,000 in savings because we'd been spending everything, claiming 100000 needed a million. Went to Dad Hagen's meeting, so I took 5000 out of savings. I thought that's pretty generous. So I had seven left. I got to the meeting. Dad Hagen got up and said, whatever you spend on giving, just double it. <laughs> I mean, I started sweating immediately because, you know, I, I believe in generosity, but he's messing my mind up here. So, so I brought 5,000. He said, whatever you're going to give and double it. So I started figuring. Now, anytime you start figuring too much during giving, you know you're in trouble right there. Figuring and fear are connected. So, so I started figuring with my little peanut brain. I saved up 12, I took five, I got seven left. Took me a while to get the 12, I need 100, and I really want a million. Bills, you know, church bills. So I turned to Trent and I said, what do you think I ought to do? I brought five, and I thought that was generous. All right, let's try that one more time. I said, I brought five. <laughs> How many ever thought you were generous? Right. How many ever been mistakenly thought you were generous? Right. I mean, I was thought I was generous, but you don't get the harvest based on what you think's generous. You get the harvest based on what God thinks is generous. So when Dad Hagen said, why don't you double it? Then I turned to Trina, what do you think I ought to do? She said, just double it. I said, that's not really the answer I was looking for. And so in my mind, I said to, I was thinking, well, you don't pay all the bills. You don't see the numbers while well, you tell me double it. And so if I double it and then I'm down to 2,000, I needed 100,000. I was really bleeding for a million and it took me so long to get 12. And now I'm going to go home with two. <laughs> I'm figuring. How many know people are figuring? So my daddy, you know, people would show him figures when he's buying a car or something. They'd say, you know, figures don't lie. But my daddy said, yeah, but liars figure. <laughs> well, we got some liars figuring. All right, now listen. So, so I'm messing around with the figures. <laughs> and so I said, okay, I'll do it. So we, we sold the 10,000. And all the way home, I only had two left in savings. And the devil said, now you're stupid, aren't you? And here's one of the things he said. He said, he already has more money than you do to start with. Oh, yeah. Well, the Bible didn't say to sow a seed whether somebody's got more money than you do or not. It says when you've received spiritual things, you give your material things, regardless how much money they got. So I'd received so many spiritual things. I said, well, I, that's why I want to be a blessing. And so, well, 10,000 down to two. Anybody want to know what happened after we sold that 10,000 when we got home? Not one thing happened. Not <laughs> I know y'all are thinking somebody drove up a Cadillac gave me that. I'm going to tell you not one thing happened. How many ever given and not one thing happened after you gave? Boy, a bunch of liars in here. I said, how many ever given and not one thing happened after you gave? And so I got home and not one thing happened. And so the devil said, now you stupid. Look at you giving. It took you so long to get that. How long is it going to take it? So I just got the promises of God out. When you're a tither, when you're a giver, Amen. get the word back out and quit Amen. listening to the thoughts in your brain. Get the word back out and start speaking the word. And so we did that and nothing happened the next week. Nothing happened the next month. I mean, regular things happen, but nothing extraordinary happened. But three months later, somebody came in the church and gave $100,000. Had never happened before. And I heard the secretary scream when she saw it on Monday morning. I thought a mouse got in the church. And I heard her scream. <laughs> happened many times since then, but it never happened before then. And within nine months, that account went to $1 million. Even people at the bank said, you know, they got some money down there at their church. Now, Dad Hagen talked about the church where they got real happy and they rejoiced, ran around the church and rolled on the floor and not a quarter fell out of their pocket. 
<laughs> All right, I got to stop. I see some of y'all losing your joy. Now listen, so, so when, it comes to, so, <laughs> when it comes to having the Holy Ghost, if you'll listen to be led by the Holy Ghost, God will bless you coming in, bless you going out. Amen. And that generosity sets things in motion. And so he said, when you're giving, one translation says one gives away and yet he increases. And so when you are a giver, expect, declare supernatural increase. Let's lift our hands up. Father God, I thank you for your blessing upon this church, upon this ministry, every tither, every giver that's here. Thank you, Lord, that your word is working mightily. We are all givers. We love to give. We love to sow. And as we sow generously, I thank you for a whopper of a harvest, generous harvest, an abundant harvest that the money will come. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for abundant provision. Even in this time, we take steps of faith to act on your word and we stretch out of our comfort zone and we expect a supernatural harvest. We thank you for that. Lift your hands up now. In the name of Jesus, a supernatural harvest for this church, for this ministry. And we declare Pastor Chaz and Joni, the church here will never lack for money. Well, shout about that. I said, you will never lack for money. Ha ha ha. I said, you will never lack for money. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you as you give. If you're online, you can give. If you're here, you can use one of the church envelopes to make it to Houston Faith Church. God bless you abundantly for your giving. And I think. Uh, let's see, you know. Your voice. Your voice. The authorities in your voice. The victories in your voice, faith in your voice, your voice is your address in the realm of the spirit. The devil is terrified the moment a believer lifts his voice. <laughs> One of my favorite passages of scripture in the book of Acts, when Paul and Silas were in prison, And at midnight, I mean, no midnight will tell you exactly what you're made out of. When it looks like everything around you has failed and things are not working right and the devil's trying to embarrass you. But at midnight, Paul and Silas said they prayed and they sang praises to God. And it said, and the prisoners heard them. So it wasn't a silent prayer meeting. This was a loud prayer and praise meeting. And so I imagine Paul and Silas uh, sitting in there, their hands are bound, their feet are bound, and embarrassed, their backs are bleeding. What you gonna do now? What you gonna do now? So imagine Paul said, well, Mr. Devil, looks like you did a good job. You got my hands, you got my feet, you got my back bleeding. Devil, you made one big mistake. You should have taped my mouth shut. Because long as I can move my mouth, I can move a mountain. Let's try that one more time. As long as I can move my mouth, I can move a mountain. Come on, let's try it again. Long as I can move my mouth, I can move a mountain. Woo! Come on. Do we have a mouth from the south? Amen. In other words, we got a mouth in here that somebody said, I'm not afraid to lift up my voice long as I can lift my voice. That's why your clapping will never be a substitute for the power that's in your voice. Okay, to clap when you want to, we won't take that away from you. But it cannot substitute for the power that, of your voice, the voice of faith, the voice of a believer, the authority is in your voice. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to me one time, he said, your faith will not necessarily prevent all mountains, but it will move all mountains. 
In other words, how many had a situation while you're believing God and a mountain showed up and you're like, well, how'd that get there? In other words, why do I have this problem? And it looks big, looks immovable, looks like it's going to be there a while. And so, but Jesus said, just talk to it. It's got to move. Amen. He's got to move. So some of you are facing situations tonight that if you'll dare to lift your voice, that mountain must be removed. And Jesus said it'll be cast into the sea, which means it'll never come back. And that means there'll be no evidence you ever had that problem. Come on, whether it's physical, mental, financial, or whatever you're dealing with, come on, 12 months from now, there'll be no evidence you ever had that problem. People have to ask you if you ever had that kind of problem. You'll say, I had the same problem, but I have faith in God. And Jesus said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things that he saith that come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Come on, do we have any mouth in here? Anybody got a mouth from the south? Woo! Long as I can move my mouth. Ha, ha, ha. And you don't have to be real talented to do that. You don't even have to be good looking. You don't have to have a lot of money in the bank. If you can move your mouth, you can move a mountain. Ha, ha, ha. So no matter what's going on in your life, you say, devil, you made a big mistake here. Because I still got my mouth. Anybody here still got your mouth? I still got my mouth. So no matter what you've lost, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're believing for, long as you got a mouth, you can get there from lifting your voice. If you'll dare to lift your voice. He said, the scenery is going to change. So the Lord said to me, many people want a change of scenery. He said, but I'm waiting on a change of sound. He said, because sound came before sight. And if you want to change the scenery, you have to change your sound. So that's where the Lord said to me, your voice is your address in the realm of the spirit. In other words, when Paul and Silas lifted their voice, it said the prisoners heard them. But the prisoners weren't the only ones that heard them. And they're singing praise to God and the power. Oh, does anybody here believe in the power of God? I don't know. I mean... I said, come on, we're not just gathering around here. We believe in the power of God. The power of God came down on the sound of their voice of praise. And the power of God, whoo, chains fell off, their hands, their feet, the doors came open, and everybody went free. The praise that's going on here tonight will not just affect you, it'll affect everybody around here if you'll dare to lift up your voice. He said, everybody will go free. Long as we can lift our voice, it'll affect our city. It's going to affect our nation if we'll dare to lift our voice. Ha, ha, ha. Look at somebody and say, don't just sit there with your teeth in your mouth. <laughs> say something. Come on, praise God. Rejoice in the goodness of God. Declare the faithfulness of God. You got to lift your voice. You got to move your mouth. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Wigglesworth said, any person can be changed by faith, no matter how they may be bound. That means the devil cannot make a bondage that your faith cannot break off of you. And there is no such thing as silent faith. Let's try that one more time. 
In other words, Jesus said, when you have faith in God, the first thing it's going to move is your mouth. That means you're going to have to get your mouth moving. You're going to have to lift up your voice. I love the quote that Trina gave, 2 Chronicles 20. It said, they're surrounded by enemies. It looks impossible. And the word of the Lord came. What did the word of the Lord come say? Y'all better go hide in a hole somewhere until this is finished. Now the word of the Lord came. (laughs) And so God said, you don't need to fight in this battle. I'll take care of this battle for you. He said, I'll fight it for you. But I do need you to do one thing. Let's just try this out. I do need you to do one thing. How many of y'all could do one thing? I'm just asking you if you do one thing. I need you to do one thing. He said, position yourself. Come on, you're going to see the power of God in operation. So they got the singers and the praisers out front. Come on, this is the passage the Lord gave us at the beginning of 2020, the beginning of this year. We had no idea what we would face this year. We had no idea we would be in this situation right now. But God did, and God gave you the answer before you ever had the problem. He said, if you'll believe the Lord. Woo, do I have any believers in here? If you'll believe the Lord. Woo, come on, I'm a believer here. So it says, when they began to sing and to praise, which means they weren't even finished. They just got started. Some of y'all hadn't even got started yet. I've been watching you. You hadn't even got started yet. Come on, if you got the dedication to come to church on Tuesday night, you ought to open your mouth and say something and praise God. Because I, I don't believe we're going to leave here the same way we came in. I believe God is going to take care of business for you supernaturally if you can move your mouth. I said if you can move your mouth. If you can move your mouth. If you can lift your voice. Ha, 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 ha. You're not going to leave here the same as when you came in. You ought to mark the spot you're at right now tonight and you say, I'm having a meeting with God. I'm not going to be quiet anymore. I'm not going to be silent anymore. I'm going to lift up my voice. Come on, the word is in your mouth. Come on, the power of God's in your mouth. When they began to sing and to pray, You don't have to have no PhD for that. When they began to sing and to pray. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> if you only knew what happens in the spirit when you start praising God. And even if you can't sing as good as I can. Because while they were singing, man, I'm singing real loud right with them. It ain't very pretty, but it's powerful. And so, well, I'm just lifting my voice. I believe the authority is in your voice. Come on, not just at church. When you get home, while you're driving in your car, don't just sit there and be quiet. Lift your voice and speak the word of God. Declare, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In other words, I believe God. I believe and I speak. And the strategies of the devil are stopped in my house. Ah, come on, let's take it to the next level in America, in our nation right now. There's some praising going on right here in Houston, Texas that'll reach all the way up into heaven. If if it'll reach heaven, it'll reach Washington, D.C. and change things, hallelujah. Come on, President Trump gonna have a dream and a vision tonight and the presence and the power of God visit him. Come on now, I don't know if y'all played football or not, or baseball or whatever you played, 
You never want to go home after the football game without some dirt and grass stains on your uniform. You need to be bleeding a little bit somewhere. And if you're on the bench, you say, put me in the game. I don't know about you, but I didn't come here 2020 to sit on the bench. You say, God, put me in the game. I'm ready to play right now. I want some grass stains on my uniform. I'm ready to play right now. Boy, you hit me, I'm ready to hit you back. Don't just lay down, let the devil run over you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So he says, when they began to sing, the Lord. When they began to praise, the Lord. This is the Lord. This is the almighty God. Moving in response to somebody praising. If I knew I could get God to operate some things, if I started praising, I'd start praising in the morning, praise him in the afternoon. If I knew God would deal with my situation, I would not be quiet about it. I would praise God. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, my God is greater. His power is greater. His grace is greater. Ha, ha, ha. Sit back down just for a minute. I'm not quite finished. Listen, I got a, I got a businessman friend who's very, very wealthy. And he's, he, when he deals with his employees, he's got a sign on his desk and it says, you got 10 seconds to get enthusiastic or get out of my office. He must have got tired of people he was paying coming in whining. Listen, you can get whining for free. I don't have to pay for it. So he wanted somebody to come in with a plan and vision. And so his, he said, you got 10 seconds to get enthusiastic or get out of my office. Well, if I worked for him, when I came in, I'd say, boss, we got some big stuff happening right now. I'm expecting some great things this year. Boss, I'm happy about it. I'm excited about it. Don't drag your behind in there whining all the time. So I laughed when I heard that. I thought, imagine God has a sign on his desk. Say, you got 10 seconds to act like I'm God. You got 10 seconds to act like God is your God. He's the almighty God. He's the same God that raised Jesus from the dead. He's the same God that split the Red Sea. He's the same God that brought the three Hebrew children to the fiery furnace and didn't even smell like smoke. And he is your God. He's the almighty God. He's your father God. Come on, you got 10 seconds to act like God is on your side. Glory! Glory! If God is for me, who could be against me? Ha, ha, ha! Woo! Ha, ha, ha! No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Ha, ha, ha. God is on my side. Ha, 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 ha. Sit down just for a minute. God, the almighty God. Woo. Glory to God. Now listen just for a minute. Dad Hagen says something like this. We talk about having faith in God. 
He said, have you ever thought about having faith in the God that lives in you? Oh, I, I need to say that one more time. Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you. So God ain't that far from you right now. He's right on the inside of you and you yield to the Holy Ghost. Ha ha. Sometimes I preach like a fat man caught in a barbed wire fence. <laughs> it's just a point here, then a point there. So we don't have time for a whole seminar tonight. But I'm giving you a couple of points. Come on. Come I on. felt another one. Come on. <laughs> to have faith in God. To dare to believe God. If you will believe. Oh, come on now. If you will believe. If you will believe. Look at somebody next to you. I said, I think he's talking to you right now. If you will believe. All things are possible to him that believes. Will you dare to believe God? Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Help me get rid of unbelief. Wigglesworth said, no man can doubt if he'll learn to shout. Let's try this side over here. No one can doubt if they'll learn to shout. Your voice has to get louder than every other voice in your mind from your past and your feelings and lift your voice with a shout and say, I refuse to doubt. I believe God. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Don't make me come back there. I will come back there. (laughs) Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Believe is a verb. Faith requires action. The moment you act on the word of God, God makes himself responsible for your results. You may know the word, but the moment you act on the word, faith is an act. Hmm. Faith is motion activated. In other words, you're going to have to move something. (laughs) There ain't nothing else moving until you move something. What do you move? The initial act of faith is to move your mouth. Lift your voice. If your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, it will never move a mountain. You get up in the morning instead of saying, good morning, Lord. Some of y'all say, good Lord, it's morning. You're wondering where the coffee is. Listen. But Smith Wigglesworth said, A believer should never get out of bed in the morning without getting lost and filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, before you get out of bed in the morning, when you get up, say, all right, I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. God's on my side. The blood has been applied. Every need shall be supplied. You are a dangerous threat to the devil. Your picture is up in the post office in hell because the devil would like to stop you, but the greater one lives on the inside of you. Ha, ha, ha. And everything the devil means for evil, God. God is turning it around for your good. Yeah. 
Go ahead and laugh a minute. How many think the choir got real happy in 2 Chronicles 20 when God set ambushments against the enemy? How many of you know they were singing, praise the Lord, mercy endures forever, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You know, I think the choir got a little smaller when they put the singers out front. They're like, you know, my throat's been bothering me. I... You think you're scared of a virus. You ain't even seen one. You ever seen one? Walk door and say, hello, I'm virus. No. You scared of something you never even seen. Come on, they're enemies. They saw them. These are armies and soldiers that are planning to kill them. But in the face of those armies, God is on our side. Woo, and when they began to sing and to praise, God said, that's all I needed from you. That's all I needed from you. I just needed one thing from you. I just needed you to do one thing. When you did that thing, I'm gonna do my part. And when God does his part, everything changes. Everything turned around. When you do your part. Woo, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, we're washed in the blood, redeemed by the blood. We are blood washed, blood blessed. We are the triumphant church. We ain't hiding. Come on now, Jesus is coming back. The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and Jesus is coming. Ha ha! John Osteen used to say something like, one wiry little old woman can run the devil off when she starts praising God. <laughs> one skinny, wiry little old woman starts praising the Lord. And demons say, oh, we're out of here. The moment you lift your voice, whoo! God ordains strength to come out of your mouth to stop the enemy and stop the strategies of the devil. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. I like this row over here. This is the drinking section over here. Once they start drinking, baby, it's all over. They start. <laughs> One guy told me, he said, I like the way you preach, but he said, I'm afraid I'd lose my mind. I told him, I said, if you knew how little you had to lose, you would let it go. How many of y'all like to lose your mind for about 30 minutes here tonight and praise God like he's your father God and quit trying to figure everything out with your brain and let God be your God and praise him and lift your voice if you dare to have faith in God, if you dare to believe God, no matter what the doctor said, no matter what the finances say, I believe God, it shall be as he told me. I believe God, I got a promise from God I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. Ah, hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout right now. Say glory to God. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Woo. All right, I'm finishing up. Ha, 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 ha. When the Lord <laughs> The Lord Jesus is Lord. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion Uh 
I just got another point now. I'm giving you this other point here. I'm still in the fence. When the Lord turned, come on, America, this nation, this generation is going into a turn right now. And the voice of the church must be heard. The voice of the Lord must be heard. The voice of the word must be heard. The voice of praise must be heard. It will register on the unseen powers of darkness that are coming against our nation now. And we lift our voice because of the power of the blood of Jesus and say, devil, get out of our nation. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. I'm redeemed by the blood. Ha ha, America! Come on, America! Believers, the church, we lift our voice! We lift our voice! Ha ha ha! Hallelujah! The Lord turned again. Woo! Come on, my dad, pastor, preacher, a preacher came to my dad and said, Pastor Hankins, whoo, the Lord just gave me a breakthrough. My daddy said, remember how you got it, because you'll need more than one. Let's just try this side over here. In other words, the Lord turned it again. In other words, you remember when he turned your situation last time. But this time, it's happening again. The Lord is turning, turning, turning your captivity, and he's doing it again. If he did it once, he'll do it again. He's turning your captivity and setting you free. He's doing it again. I said he's doing it again. He's doing it again. A fresh anointing and a new revival and the word of God and revelation coming to your life. He said, I'm doing it again. Woo! I feel like slapping somebody right now. That pin. Not real hard. The Lord turned. Ha ha ha. The psalmist David had a lot of situations that had to turn. He turned my morning into dancing. That means the same place that grief and sorrow and disappointment wrecked your life. God said in the same place, you'll dance in the same place. You'll laugh in the same place. You'll praise in the same place. Come on, you will not go down in shame or disappointment. The same place. He turned my morning into dancing. Come on, dance through the house. Laugh, I hear laughter in your house. I hear laughter in the White House. That joy returned to the White House. Ha, ha, ha. The Lord turned again our captivity and our mouth was filled with laughter. Ha, ha, ha. Martin Luther said, you have as much joy and laughter in life as you have faith in God. Let's just try this side over here. You will have as much joy and laughter in life as you have faith in God. When you have faith in God, there'll be some joy in your mouth and joy in your house. And Martin Luther said, nothing 
<laughs> upsets the devil so much as when I laugh in his face. Because he knows through God, I'm more than a match for him. Dad Hagen said, I laugh more when things get rough because I know the answer is very close. Come on, even laughter is a good medicine. Come on, it's a good medicine for your body, your mind. Laughing. You're laughing. People say, what you laughing about? You say, I'm on medication. <laughs> they say, you act funny while you're on medication. You ought to see me when I ain't on it. But I can be mean. In other words, Bishop Keith Butler a few years ago went to the doctor with very serious um, symptoms in his body. When he went to the doctor, the doctor told him, you need well, I feel like <laughs> you need, what did he say? 10 or something like that. He said, you need 10 good belly laughs every day. And all that sickness will leave your body. Some of y'all are like, I got to take 38 pills of this and that. Why don't you laugh for about 30 minutes before you take any of them? Your immune system, your digestive system. God did not create you to be oppressed, depressed, disappointed, sad, sorrow. Come on now. The joy of the Lord. I said the joy of the Lord. The Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. It says God sits in the heaven and he laughs. Someone said, I don't believe in laughing. What you gonna do when you get to heaven and you hear God laugh? <laughs> Listen, even if you don't know the joke, you laugh out of respect. Because <laughs> I don't believe laughing is very spiritual. Well, let me tell you something, camel breath. You can't get more spiritual than God. I know you've been trying, but God laughs. He's the original laugher. <laughs> and you get in his presence and you might go in there upset and disturbed, but when you get in his presence, you're going to come out of there going, ha, 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 ha. God is on my side, for the blood has been applied. Every need shall be supplied. Nothing shall be denied. So I enter into rest. I know I'm blessed. I have passed the test, and I will get God's best. That means your best blessings hadn't even happened yet. Your best miracles have not happened yet. Come on, God got a better day ahead for you. You know, the Lord, ha, 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 ha. When the Lord, it's Psalms 126, uh -huh. turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. One translation said it seemed too good to be true. Did you know God is planning things just for you? <laughs> that when it happens, you're going to go, it's like a dream. It seemed too good to be true. We were like those that dream. Ha ha. Never give up on the dream. You're sitting in a dream. You're sitting in your dream. I said, You're sitting in your dream. You're praising in your dream. Come on, just five years ago, nothing to it but a dream. 
but all faith turns dreams into reality. In other words, it was nothing but a dream, but when you believe God, We'll laugh about that. <laughs> he turned again our captivity, and our mouth was filled with laughter. Yes. And some of you say, well, he ain't going to make me laugh. I don't care what he says. I ain't laughing. I tell people, if you laugh, it makes you better looking. I have another saying that goes right along with that. If you'll laugh, people forget that you're ugly. Listen. In other words, listen. The Lord turned again. Things are turning right now tonight. On a personal level. Ha, 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 ha. The Lord said to me, why are you laughing here? Something's happening back at your house. Why are you praising here? Something's happening back at your house. Why are you praising here? Something is happening in your future. Why are you rejoicing here? God is opening new doors and making a way for you. Come on, the devil's under your feet. The Lord turn my captivity. Fill my mouth with laughter. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Stand up on your feet. I'm finished. Listen. I love the joy of the Lord and joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I've seen my mama praising and running. You say, why would somebody want to run like that? I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Come on, you might have had three and a half years of trouble, but I hear the sound that things are turning right now. And my, my mama took off running. When I started running, I just started running with her. I didn't know what was happening. I just took off running with her. Ah! <laughs> hey! While I was rejoicing, while I was running, while I was praising, the Lord set ambushments against my enemy. Woo! Can't nobody do me like Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Turning, turning, turning. I said it's turning right now. I said it's turning right now in your health, in your body, in your family, in your mind, in your money, in your finances, while you're praising God, while you rejoice. Ha ha. Serious business. You say that looks funny. No, it's serious business. Before you leave tonight, you say, I need to take care of some serious business. Matter of fact, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to praise. I'm going to rejoice like God's already working in my situation. He's already turning things around. I'm laughing. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to praise God. My Father God is already working right now. Ha, 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 ha. He turned. It turned while I was praised. the Lord a shout hallelujah. Woo! Woo! Ha, 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 ha. 
because of the blood of Jesus, the voice of victory and triumph, the voice of faith. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. If you can't do nothing else, lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I give you praise. I give you glory. For the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. The Spirit of God lives on the inside of me. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. You turned my captivity. You set me free. You turned it around again. I'm like a dream is coming to pass. Ha, ha, ha. My mouth is filled with laughter. Ha, ha. How would you act if you already had the thing you've been believing for? Man, I tell you, I believe, I receive. (laughs) Come on, release your faith right now. Release your faith right now. You have a measure of the God kind of faith. The same faith created the world in the beginning. You got a dose of that. Ha, ha, ha. Let's lift our hands up. Father God, we thank you that you turn. Turn in our health, in our family, in our lives, but also in America, in our nation. Plead the blood of Jesus over the White House, over our President Trump his family, vice president, those in leadership. We plead the blood of Jesus. Satan, we command you to stop your maneuvers. Desist in your operations against the United States of America right now. And the wisdom of God and the presence of God and the faith of God rises up in America, in our churches, even laughter in the White House, laughing in the days of sorrow and the days of mourning are over. The Lord is turning our captivity. And joy returns to America. Ha ha. Lift your voice, give the Lord a shout. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Woo. Glory. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise, the Lord. Praise to you, God. 